This video is about business cycle. So, do you think that our economy is a straight line? Which means our output is constant over time in the short run? Of course not. The economy moves into cycles. The economy improves and then deteriorates. And that's why each business cycle could be classified into four phases. Upturn, it increases, then we reach the peak, the maximum, and then it slows down, we have a downturn, it reaches the minimum, which is rough, and then the cycle keeps repeating itself. The economy improves again and then deteriorates. We have a growth and then we have a decline. And that's why the upturn, we can call it an expansion. The downturn, we can call it a contraction. Also, we have other synonyms for upturn, such as a recovery. The synonyms for downturn is called a recession. Another name for upturn is a boom. Another name for downturn is a burst or past. Another new name for upturn is growth. Another name for downturn is decline. Therefore, Let's look here at the characteristics of each phase of the business cycle. Let's assume that we have upturn. So the growth rate in upturn, the economy is growing. So the growth rate will be higher. During the downturn, the growth rate will be lower. What about unemployment rate? For upturn, it will be low because we produce a lot. Consequently, the majority of people are having a job. While for downturn, unemployment rate will be higher because we produce less. It means that people lose their jobs. Liquidity. Since everyone is working, the economy is growing, companies are hiring more people and are producing a lot, therefore we have a lot of liquidity in the economy. During downturn, people lose their jobs, companies are downsizing, they produce less, the economy is slowing down, consequently liquidity is lower. Therefore, personal income during upturn, because they, get, they work and they get high salary, therefore we have a high personal income, while during the downturn, personal income will decline. What about consumer spending? Since unemployment rate is low and people produce a lot, consequently consumption will increase. During downturn, people lose their jobs, therefore it will decline. What about corporate profit? Since the economy is growing, so companies are making profit, while during the downturn, the corporate profit is declining or sometimes they make a loss. Therefore, let's assume that here we have two countries, country A and country B. And each country will have its business cycle. So which one do you think is better? The business cycle of country A or the business cycle of country B? So country A, it has a stable business cycle, which means we have less volatility. However, in country B, we have high volatility. The business cycle goes up and then decline in a very short period of time. And then it have peaks, strong peaks, and have strong troughs and all that stuff. So which one is better? Usually, country A is better, which means it's all the time it's better to have a stable business cycle. We want to avoid highly volatile business cycle. Therefore, you discover that the majority of developed countries having a stable business cycle, the majority of developing countries, they have a highly volatile business cycle. So let's look here. This is our business cycle. We know that here we have upturn and here we have a downturn. Therefore, what will happen if this downturn became a severe downturn, a longer downturn, a longer contraction? This is called depression. Is this good or bad for the economy? It's definitely terrible for the economy. And in order to know how worse a depression could get, just go to Google, write the Great Depression in 1929. And even without reading, press images and look at how people were miserable during the Great Depression. Therefore, as we said before, for each country, they need to stabilize their business cycle, which means they avoid severe contraction, the depression. That's why for all countries, they need to use their monetary policy and fiscal policy in order to stabilize the economy. But what about if we have the opposite? We have here an expansion, an upturn. And then we have a longer and severe upturn. Is this good for the economy? The answer is also not. Why? Because this would result in a bubble. Like what happened in the United States in 2008 during the global financial crisis. Which means asset prices increase at a higher rate above its actual value. Therefore, one day it will crash immediately. Therefore, once they crash, they will disturb the economy. Therefore, we want to avoid high volatility, high fluctuations. We need to have a stable business cycle. And that's why for each government, they need to avoid depression and bubble. 
by using monetary policy and fiscal policy. Therefore, for any country to stabilize the economy, they have monetary policy and they have fiscal policy. Monetary policy is mainly the responsibility of the central bank. In Australia, we call it Reserve Bank of Australia, RBA. In the United States, we call it the Fed, Federal Reserve. The fiscal policy is the responsibility of the government. Therefore, for the monetary policy, it's mainly from its name related to money supply and interest rate or the cash rate. However, the fiscal policy is mainly related to the government revenue and mainly the major source of revenue is taxes and government expenditure. So, taxes, which is government revenue and government expenditure, mainly refers to the budget. Therefore, let's assume that we have a recession. It means that we have a contraction. So, if we have a recession, the economy could head into depression and it will have a longer contraction. So, what will be our appropriate policy? Our appropriate policy is to move against the economy. So, if the economy like this, if the economy is moving down here, we have a recession. So, we would like to pull it up. Therefore, our policy will be the opposite of recession or contraction, which will be an expansionary monetary policy or expansionary fiscal policy. So, if I talk about expansionary monetary policy, what we're going to do? People lose their jobs. People don't have money. Companies are downsizing, they have less profit or they make a loss. We have less liquidity. Therefore, we need to increase money supply and or decrease in rate. What about expansionary fiscal policy? We need to increase government spending. We need to give a lot of subsidy, build infrastructure and decrease taxes. What if we have the opposite? We have a boom or we have an expansion. I know that if I wait, this boom will turn into a bubble. Therefore, my policy will be moving against the economy, which means if we have a boom, we need to slow down the economy. So if we have an expansion, a boom or upturn, we need to use a contractionary policy. So what do I mean by contraction policy? Slowing down the economy. So here, people, they work, companies make a lot of profits, they produce a lot, a high growth rate, there's a lot of liquidity. So I need to decrease money supply to decrease the liquidity level. Consequently, interest rate will be higher. And if we'd like to use a contractionary fiscal policy, since people are working, we don't need to subsidize them. Therefore, we need to decrease government spending and increase taxes. So every time we talk about the budget, we have government revenue and we have government expenditure. So let's assume that we have a government revenue of 100 billion, government expenditure of 70. So 100 is bigger than 70. It means it's positive. It means that we have a budget surplus. Let's assume that we have the same revenue, but expenditure now is equal to 100. So government revenue is equal to government expenditure. It means that 100 minus 100 is equal to zero. So this means that we have a budget balance. Let's assume we have the same revenue, but expenditure is higher 120. So I know that government expenditure is bigger than government revenue. So 100 minus 120, it will give us a negative 20, a negative value. Therefore, we have a budget deficit. So all the time we express our budget as a percentage of our GDP in order to know what will be the percentage from our gross domestic product because each country has a different size of the economy therefore i need to express it as a percentage of gdp so let's assume that we have a deficit of in this example 20 billion for example from where we get this money we need to borrow either domestically or internationally so if we we'll borrow what will happen our public debt will increase we use the word public debt here because we talk about the debt related to the country if i talk about the debt related to household or Household, for example, we will call it private debt. Therefore, we also express public debt as a percentage of GDP. Therefore, let's assume this is our business cycle. We have an upturn, an expansion, and we have a downturn, a recession. So which policy we will use? We said here the economy during upturn is expanding. So our policy will be slow it down. Therefore, we'll use a contractionary policy. During our downturn, the economy is slowing down. So I'm afraid from a depression. Therefore, I need to pull it up. How are we going to pull it up? We used an expansionary policy. So let's start with a monetary policy. How are we going to use a monetary policy in upturn in terms of money supply? So during upturn, we will use a lower money supply. During a downturn, we'll have a higher money supply. What about interest rate? During upturn, we need to increase interest rate. So people will prefer to put their money in a bank rather than consuming them. Consequently, will decrease liquidity. So it will be higher interest rate while during a recession, we will have a lower interest rate. Then let's talk about fiscal policy in terms of government spending. 
So during an expansion, we're going to decrease government spending. However, during a downturn, we will increase government spending. What about taxes? During an expansion or upturn, we will have higher taxes, while during a recession or downturn, we will have lower taxes. Therefore, what will be our budget during upturn? Our budget will be a surplus, while during downturn, it will be a deficit, which means for any government, during good days, we should have a surplus. During bad days, we should have a deficit. Then I would like to see how we're going to use monetary policy to increase or decrease money supply. So we do this one through something called open market operations. And when we talk about open market operation, we simply have two tools, either an open market purchase or open market sale. What do we mean by open market purchase? The central bank will go and buy treasury bonds from the public. So if the central bank will buy treasury bonds, what will happen? Central bank will take the bond and give them the money. Therefore, what will happen to the money supply in the market? It will increase. Incre the other one, open market sale. Central bank will go to the public and they will sell them treasury bonds. Therefore, central bank, RBA, will give the public treasury bonds and in return take the liquidity, take the money from them. Therefore, what will happen to money supply? Money supply will decrease. Therefore, open market purchase is considered an expansionary monetary policy, while open market sale is considered a contractionary monetary policy. So, let's draw it here on a graph. Here we have our x-axis, which is the quantity of money. Our y-axis is the interest rate. This is our downward money demand, which means there is always an active relationship between interest rate and demand for money, which means if interest rate is high, people will prefer to hold this money and put more money in the bank in order to benefit from a higher interest rate and vice versa. Our money supply is always vertical because this is the amount of money available in the economy. Here with the point of intersection between demand of money and supply of money is this point which will give us R1 and M1. Let's assume that RBA will increase money supply. So money supply will shift to the right. We'll have here MS2. Therefore, we'll have a new intersection point between money demand and money supply 2, which is R2. So as we see that, if we increase money supply, our interest rate will decrease. 